This is Access Door County, and I am your host, Victoria Serenich. On today's program, we are going to talk about Door County quilts and the ladies who do. Our guests today are Judy Ward from Sturgeon Bay and Marianne Zanter, who drove here from Nassawapi. Welcome. Thank you. Very happy to be here. I really appreciate you coming and be telling me a beginner at quilting some of the basics and then some of the really beautiful advanced things you can do with quilting. Who would like to start and explain something about quilting? Judy. Well because I am really into the tools of quilting and, the, and the, sometimes the shortcuts and also because I don't like to do math and many times the math has been done for me by someone else, I brought you some of the basic units that can be used to make quilts. You don't just have to go buy yardage and cut it to suit your needs. You can buy two and a half inch strips of fabric rolled together, if you wish. You can buy charm packs, which are five inch squares. Or you can buy layer cakes, which are 10 inch squares of fabric, usually sold with compatible fabrics from a specific designer. And there are others that are smaller, or some are triangles. And there are many patterns and tools to work just with those pre-cuts, so you don't have to have a lot of cutting materials for your purposes. Now, Judy, you already astounded me because you introduced me to charm packs and mm -hmm. uh, layer cakes and something I noticed when I was doing some research on quilting so that I could have at least a good question <laughs> was that the vocabulary is tremendous. The vocabulary has history. Mm -hmm. The vocabulary has geography, depending on where you've been. And uh, so as we meet a new term, I might remark on it. That's but fine. thank you for letting me interrupt on that. Tell me about the little, the little pieces and the little tools. Well, at some of our guilds, we come and we bring something we can work at by hand, and we can talk about that as we talk about the guilds. So Grandmother's Flower Garden is a, a block that's been around since quilting's been around, and it's based on using hexagons, and then you wrap fabric around and you baste it onto paper, and that's a good way to use up those papers that fall out of magazines, the, the subscription oh, things. Oh, yeah, they're a little bit hard, a little bit tougher. Right, mm -hmm. like cardstock. So you cut those, and I have a, a bigger machine that you crank and it die cuts these, so that's even better in terms of time. But you, you baste fabric around those, and then when you join them together, you get the flowers, and then you just build out from those and can make a quilt. So this is a good use of scraps. It's a good way to do something small when you're waiting in the dentist mm -hmm. office or wherever you're waiting for an opportunity. So that's just one example of Of how you get work. it started and how you get these tiny little squares together. <laughs> now, in order to get squares together, you sew strips together first, long strips, and then you take your ruler, which I brought an example of, and a cutting oh, mat, and one of the greatest inventions for quilters is the rotary cutter. When that was developed, I believe that was the 80s. I think so. Um, there are different sizes, there are different styles. This one has a lock, so it holds it open, and when mm -hmm. you're done, you make sure you close it, because you never want to blade out. This one is ergonomic, ergonomically correct, so it's easier on your wrist. Sure, a lot of sewing probably can be oh, difficult yeah. on Correct. your hands. Very definitely. So you don't see any scissors here. We can use scissors. I, I do know, use scissors. I see scissors. <laughs> and then there are small ones, and I brought a sample ruler here. This is for cutting circles. So you would fold your fabric into a square, and then whatever size you want of the ones possible, you lay on the corner, and then you take the small cutter, put it in this little slot, cut around, and you have a perfect circle. And see, I thought those were carpenter tools. What did I know? <laughs> the mat is important because it protects the blade. Mm -hmm. The rulers come in all different sizes, shapes. And, and in our grandmother's days, we, people drew uh, on cereal boxes to make little templates to cut around for various shapes, like the squares you might use. Okay. Well, now they come in this acrylic. I haven't pulled the paper off, but they tell you what size it is. And your cutter can cut right around those if you want to cut out a small piece mm -hmm. and do it that way. So, so this is just a very simple introduction to what's out there for anyone who might want to try quilting. And now there are a lot of people that uh, are interested in quilting. I imagine it's uh, often women, but you have different groups that meet in our area. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about activities coming up, but uh, there's uh, Trillium. 
Trillium Quilt Guild is in Sister Bay, mm -hmm. and it's I asked a little bit of the history there, and it's probably been going 15 or 16 or so years, and now uh, has a membership. I'm going to say 40 or 50, and and many of those people are away in the winter, mm -hmm. but come back with great ideas that we can use at Trillium or be taught at Trillium. That particular guild has a program a month. They meet twice a month, the second and fourth Thursdays at 10 o'clock at the uh, fire department building in Sister Bay. Okay, and we'll scroll some of the information okay. on where the organizations meet on the screen during the program. Mm -hmm. And Mary Ann, you're mm -hmm. involved with different groups. I'm involved with uh, the Peninsula Peacemakers, which is sometimes referred to as the Thursday night group because we meet the first and third Thursday of each month at mm -hmm. the United Methodist Church in Sturgeon Bay. And then Judy and I are both members of Door County Quilters, which mm -hmm. is the library group. That's right. And, um, it, because it originally started by meeting at the library. And in fact, um, Jane Green, who was head librarian at one time, I guess she was interested in quilting and she decided to retire and learn how to quilt. And she became a, quite a force for quilting, I think, in Door County. Mm -hmm. And she wanted, wondered if there were other people who were interested in getting together. I guess they put an ad in the paper and they were amazed at how many people came to this meeting, mm -hmm. and so that was the beginnings of uh, the Door County Quilters. And I believe in Sturgeon Bay there is a gorgeous quilt on one of the walls. That it was made by Jane. And yes. that was made by Jane. Yes. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful quilt. And of course now we have barn quilts, those big eight mm -hmm. foot by eight mm -hmm. foot squares, but uh, those we're not going to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> we all, and there are places that uh, we can go for classes. Oh, sure. Uh, at the Barn Door Quilt Shop. Yep. She and, offers beginning quilting. And that's uh, her uh, name? Uh, Carol Hodges. Mm -hmm. And the shop is on 3rd Avenue. Yeah, I, I see uh, 154 3rd, and she mm -hmm. offers beginning quilting, which mm -hmm. is great for people like me that are still, this is a layer cake. I, would have, <laughs> I would have expected chocolate. <laughs> uh, or at Door County Vacuum, I understand that Gwen Tremble also will help you with your... Oh, she would give you any information you needed. She doesn't teach classes there. She would teach you how to use your sewing machine if you bought a sewing machine from her. Mm -hmm. But you can also see some of her fantastic applique quilts that she has on display in they're, the store. They're hanging up in the store. I've mm -hmm. seen some of those. And Door County Vacuums is on Michigan at near 3rd mm -hmm. in the city of Sturgeon Bay. Right. Let's Sometimes take, there yeah. have been classes through learning and retirement. There was oh, one on, on making a, a table runner that uh, Georgia, mm -hmm. what's her last name, sorry, Georgia taught. But anyway, um, there Georgia are classes Bar. that they mm -hmm. sometimes offer. Um, other quilt shops in the area might offer classes ran, you know, for a specific quilt sometimes, or Carol will too. Um, sometimes, one year Carol brought in one of the nationally known quilters and she taught a uh, workshop for everyone. Trillium occasionally brings in someone from out of town. A, a guest or, speaker, mm -hmm. someone that is either accomplished in it or knows the Correct. history or mm -hmm. knows something about new fabrics or new tools. Well, quilts tend to be very traditional and they have, many of them have names. You can find a book with a thousand different quilt patterns and they'll ha each have a name and they have a history. But today modern quilters are getting interested in trying a little bit of their own thing and going a little bit different than the old traditionals. Mm -hmm. And Judy and I both have a, a kind of a modern quilt here first to show. And Judy, do you want to tell us about yours? Well, I was asked to teach a class as part of a fundraiser. People bid on the opportunity to take a class. And we decided to go with what's considered a modern quilt. And modern quilt in part can be defined by larger shapes, more room for quilting, uh, some of the contemporary fabrics rather than the more tradition. Sometimes there's more of a, of a large print. She can tell you more yeah. about hers. <laughs> but I made this in this colorway with the dark blue, but I also made it with multiple bright color or in each of the blocks with white, uh -huh. and it's a totally different look when you do that. So uh, simple pattern, easy cutting, easy. If you can sew a straight seam, you can do these. Uh -huh. um, we'll talk about quilting later, but I don't usually quilt my own. I have a professional quilter with a long arm machine do it, and we can talk about that later. And I was going to ask, because we've talked about making the little uh, 
square, the blocks using layer cakes and charms, and now I know about jelly rolls. Uh, so, but you didn't talk about the quilting part, where it makes right. it puffy. Well, the batting is what makes it puffy. So you put something in between, and I think that's the definition of a quilt. It's mm -hmm. three layers. It's a, a top, a middle, and a backing. Oh, and, okay. um, and then held together at various points with stitching. Now, it could be just tied, where you would go and just make a little knot with yarn every, every little place. Or you could do hand quilting, and I have a couple of examples of hand quilting. Okay. Um, or machine quilting, you can do it on your own machine. This one was small enough that I could get this under my machine and I could, I could do this. Mm -hmm. And um, you notice hers has straight line quilting, which yes. is very often the contemporary look. The person that quilted mine, sometimes you can see it on the back, but she did flowers, she did what we call uh, meandering, where you oh, just yes. make loops. But on the long arm machine, which is a room size machine, the whole quilt is laid out, and, and often it's uh, freehand, and they do their own drawing, but sometimes it's computerized, mm -hmm. and they can do the whole quilt and quilt it. Well, that sounds like a sailmaker shop. They have those big yeah. machines, and yes. then the machine actually rolls around on top Correct. of the the mm -hmm. sale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so these so, are two so modern So these are two quilts. modern ones. Thank you. I will I will put them up on the table here and you can put the next one out. Okay. Well, I'm going to move to applique and traditional applique is not what you're going to see here. Traditional <laughs> hand applique is needle turned, you turn the seams under, often it was flowers or birds or whatever, but you can also fuse fabric. There's a something you can press on the back of your fabric before you cut a piece out and then you take your iron and press it on and it stays where you oh. put it. These chickens and eggs were done that way and I used contemporary fabrics for that period of time and, and happened to um, this have decided to go with uh, some fabrics that I bought from a, from a very famous Wisconsin quilter who passed away some years ago and when they sold some of her stash, as we call it, her supplies, <laughs> I was able to buy some of hers and put into the chicken quilt. But applique on machine, you can use a zigzag, you can use any stitch you want to go around the edge by machine. It outlines the design. Right. Okay. So that's what this is an example of. And so you just go and look for fabrics that you think will, you, that appeal to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And this happened, okay. I found some border fabric that had chickens of yeah, sort in it. Yeah, I see chickens. Both, <laughs> this one too has mm -hmm. chickens. <laughs> And you can find chicken like wire them. fabric, all kinds of fun things, I just like depending on what you want to do. And, and the so colors, and they none of it doesn't have to match, but there is a symmetry. The birds are all the same shape, mm -hmm. and the eggs are the same shape, uh, just mm -hmm. arranged slightly uh, wandering around. And if you notice, eggs were made into flowers. And <laughs> eggs are made into flowers. <laughs> Fried <I love> eggs. <laughs> okay. Well, that one's terrific. Oh, look at the back, how pretty. Now, is that special? The I, fact that the back is so different? I just like... It, plus, it, if you're doing your own quilting, it can hide some of your mistakes. <laughs> but I did not quilt this one either. Okay. Um, oh, lovely. I suppose I traditionally the backings Excuse were me. made of oh. muslin. Um, but I think these days people want their quilts to be more interesting and to be uh, attractive either side. Uh, and so most people do use something a little bit. This is a subtle pattern on, on the back of this, uh, but we tend to choose regular fabric, shall we say, other than okay, just muslin. So, so muslin was because it was an economical thing to do. I think mm -hmm. so, And yeah. available. And available, right. And so now, uh, we've got all times these fabric what choices. they are, we have choices. Yeah. Um, this was a kind of a study in color. Uh, one of the Peninsula Peacemaker Guild has, um, every year has a challenge. And the challenge for the year that this we did this, that I did this, was we all had to make the same middle. And then we could do something in the borders if we wanted to. And the idea was to play with color. And I chose a gradient fabric that went from yellow into orange. Mm -hmm. And I used it in different ways in the piecing of the blocks. And um, uh, Judy was talking about applique. And you might think my borders are applique, but they're not, they're pieced. So uh, it was sort of just sewn into the pieces rather than put on top of the border. Okay, so 
Explain the difference then between applique and piece. Would it help if you had one of your little pieces? From, those are pieces, those little We hexagons could show you right you on here. By piecing, you, you are sewing together squares or rectangles or triangles. triangles. You make mm -hmm. the shape first. You cut the shape and then you sew this triangle into this okay. space or you, or you combine one next what's to called the a four patch. If you, if you yeah, can see this, this there's four, four here and there's four oh, here. okay, yeah, all right, like tile floors. And mm -hmm. to make the flower, there are little triangles on each corner of what had been a square. Okay. So all of those are sewn as if you were sewing pieces together. Piece it like a jigsaw puzzle, mm -hmm. sewing right. it together. Exactly. Whereas okay. with right. applique, you have a foundation already and then you carefully stitch around and apply into like the top of the quilt. Rose oh. petals or flower petals on top by hand. Okay. Or by machine, depending okay. on how you do it. Okay. Well, right. that's a great explanation because I wasn't clear on that at okay. all. Thank you. Sure. I've got this one. Okay. What's the next one? Well, I brought this one because for two reasons. It's, um, it's a sampler quilt. And samplers are a way to try doing different blocks at, uh, and then trying to combine uh, similar fabrics in some. And this one just from a distance looks different than up close because it's, I've used lots of very busy fabrics and I like to do more of that now that I'm comfortable with color. Sometimes people are intimidated by how to work with different colors and often we'll go to a store and want to buy a kit that has exactly the fabrics that are in the sample mm -hmm. that they have because they want it to look just like that. Well, in this one, I have large leaves and some small blocks. I have busy prints. I have little birds here and there. I saw the birds. Um, There's I, a bird. Mm -hmm. That's the one I started with. And, if, and, and there are some others tucked in here. And I, and I will show you the back in a minute. But okay. um, I belong to, I demonstrate gadgets at a quilt store down near Madison in Wanakee, Wisconsin. A friend of mine, has owned that quilt store for some time and I am really into the tools and I also then was able to, do, to go to a club there and each month someone would demonstrate a block and we'd all go home and make it in our own choice of fabrics and then okay. when we all were done we all used the same pattern which is really a very traditional pattern but they all look different depending on what fabrics we chose. Sure. Traditional sampler quilts often are lined up with the blocks going straight across and they'll do, awesome. she'll show you <laughs> one more like that. Now on the back of here, I'm going to show you this because here are some more birds. I so guess you maybe did the it back go this as way. well. In this case, I pieced the back because they had a, a fabric that went with this with all these birds. And I called this quilt, sometimes many people like to name their quilts. And I named this one, A Little Bird Told Me, mm -hmm. <laughs> because of that little tiny blue bird that you found. Yeah, oh. But my mother used to say that to people. A little bird told me it's your birthday or a little oh, bird told yeah. me this. So sometimes, the fabric talks to you and you'd make something based on what you find there. And then and pieced the, backs are frequently done because it's a good way to use a fabric that you have just remnants sure, of. Sure, instead of having one uh, same mm -hmm. uh, And the other thing is here, you can probably under these lights see the quilting that this person I did. I can, I was going to ask, that's what a design Again, and everything. My friend who, who did the quilting is a long, long arm quilter and she could do specific quilting patterns to suit each block, so they're not going to all be the same. Oh, fascinating. I think it's Eleanor Burns that said she quilts with, with credit her, card. With her credit card, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I have an example of um, a sampler quilt too, which is a work in progress. It's only a quilt top. It's not put all together yet. In fact, there's even another row that needs to go on this. But you said that you okay. all went to your meeting and you mm -hmm. uh, learned to do a block. Well, the Peninsula Peacemakers last year uh, had a program where once a month, someone would make a small kit to make one of these blocks. They'd bring it to the meeting. We'd all sew. we bring our sewing machines to that one. We would all sew and make the blocks. So we've got about 10 of each of these blocks. And um, it's now my job to put them together into a quilt. <laughs> oh, okay. So we had, we did it for eight months, so we have eight different patterns. And uh, as I say, we're the, I just wanted to sh show that sure. this is how we kind of Well, go I see they're it. all different. I mean, well, we there are some that are the square same. and has little, little points coming right. off of it. Mm -hmm. And this one's all just 
just little squares, and these are pieces, right? You right. You put it around and you baste it onto the something. Right? This, these are pieces on your sewing machine, so you line them up like you would the seam of a dress. Oh, and just get so, just straight right. down. Just, okay. Right. This one is actually the same as that yellow quilt, the, the block that was in the yellow quilt mm -hmm. there, was somebody made that one. And here's a different type of star. With, yeah, with centers. the little centers mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. on that one. So the, again, we're, we're making these and we will be donating them to charity. We don't know to whom yet, but we will be donating them. We do a lot of charity quilts through the Peninsula Peacemakers. Okay, so, and you're meeting at? At the United Methodist, the United Church, Methodist Church on Church. Thursday evenings. And that, so how many quilts are you making? I think we can make four from all of the blocks that we made last year. Uh, four twin-sized quilts. So then when you say donating, possibly it's something an organization would then like use as a raffle or something? They could do that, or we've given them to help, who I'm sure give them help to the Door people. County. Right. Okay. We've given them to the, EMT, the local EMTs who have a few on their truck, and if they have a child who is involved with something, they can give them a, cult, a quilt that, to cuddle with. That, uh, does the child... Gets to keep it, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. that's fantastic. Um, In a fire or something, I've seen yeah. that, where the, the paramedics or the fire department will help soothe right. the Right, we've made person. a bunch for the um, birthing center at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, Oh. And, and individuals County. in the guilds have done quilts of valor that are sent mm -hmm. to wounded soldiers. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. there, after 9-11, there, there were there quilters so that many, made them yeah. for the fire. Quilters are families. very generous people, and they like making quilts, so they like to make them for others. So. Oh, <laughs> there we Thank go. Thank you. So what uh, if, well, maybe there's... Yeah, here, I've got a sampler go here, too, so maybe this good one time, would be fine. a good time to show that one since we were talking about sampler quilts. This again was a challenge for the guild. We had a block of the month, block a month that we could, we, you know, we ah. had a few of them that we had to incorporate into our design, and then we could put them together any way we wanted. Um, you could make just a table runner, or this is, I think, a full size quilt. So um, it's just another sampler. Each block is something a little different. So when you get together and work on something like this. Does everybody make like one block or do you have a big table well, or how this, do you do this that? This week in a group. When we have the challenge, uh, we issue the challenge and then everybody works on it by themselves mm -hmm. until we have our quilt show and then we show them all and have the people who come to the quilt show vote on what they like best. Oh, okay. So, so this you made this one. Yes. It wasn't a, a large group of people no, that made this one. No, this one was one that I made myself. Okay. Right. Now, there are times when the guilds will work on a oh, quilt yeah. together, and sometimes they're pictorial quilts where one will do a segment of a picture, and then someone else will do another segment, and they put it together. Mm -hmm. But very often, because it's not like the old quilting bees where everybody works on each other's anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more a matter of bringing in what you have and then maybe finding a work day where you can assemble sure, them. Sure, because time frames now are not the same as yeah. they were. People right. have different schedules. And why do you call it a sampler? Because it's all Each different, all different. the squares a are different. A sample of different types. Of yeah. styles of different of pictures. pictures. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And this one is hand quilted. Uh, okay, so that means instead of using that I don't long know. arm, you it's probably can't tell. In if, the right light, if the shows. right light, you can see. Where I can. It's, it's beautiful. I see that. And uh, you mean you individually stitched each one of those? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I should say that louder for all our viewers. <laughs> that Marianne individually stitched every one of those stitches on there. So that's quite a labor of love, and it's beautiful. Oh, it totally is a labor it of is. love. It yeah, is. no question. Gosh, thank you. Okay. Another challenge within some of the uh, guilds and trillium is doing one that we, I believe, in the summer will gather with what we've made, but they, we each purchase two thirds yard of the same fabric by a fabric designer that people really like, and then you make whatever you want. It could be a tote bag. It could be a um, a scene, it could be part of a pieced quilt, and then we all get together and show what we did with that, plus whatever fabrics we want to put with it. That has nothing to do with this quilt. I'm just moving this over, but I'm going to show you this. That was very good. <laughs> you know, we could use you. It's historic county. You can interview Segway. people. Segway. Uh, I actually made two quilts like this, and I don't have the fabric I started with, but this is uh, kaleidoscope blocks, so there's 
the centers here are kaleidoscopes. So you take a fabric, it's like repeats in wallpaper, you look for fabric that have repeats and you mm -hmm. stack that fabric. There are some people, there are some style they call stack and whack, there are other names for it. In this case, I was cutting triangles. After you stack the fabric, you put one motif on top of another and, and stitch through so that it will sit perfectly on top of the same picture below it. Mm -hmm. Then you take your cutters and you cut triangles or diamonds. And then when you put them together, you get the kaleidoscope design. So in this case, I have a floral wreath in the center I and lighter out here. Yeah, and in this out. one, I've got the spinning look. And this one, it's, oh, this is so. Well, when I pieced the first one, like Look this. at all these little curlies coming off here. Right. right. So, so it's really fun because each block you have, th you have options. I have three options when there are triangles. I have only two when I have diamonds. Uh -huh. But you can piece, turn them each way before you sew anything and decide which gives you the most interesting center. And then you assemble it. It's, it's a challenging thing to do, but it's so much fun because each time you have a block, it's just like unveiling something special. Sure, like a kaleidoscope. Of right. One of those... Uh, so I made this to teach a class at a, this same quilt store in Wanakee. Some A woman had said she wanted a class from a specific book. So I made it, you asked how many hours. This took hours and hours and hours. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> And had it quilted, or they had it quilted. And, I, uh, it, and, I, and the quilt shop owned the quilt. And then I made a second one because I liked it so much. Well then, long story short, is I, it was hanging in my husband's office and they asked if we would leave it behind to hang in his office. And it was like giving up a child. I had to really think hard about that. <laughs> so it is hanging where he used to be. And I was able to purchase this one back from the quilt store because once the book was out of print, they can't, they don't offer the classes anymore because oh. you have to have current um, Teachers books and things available. Books. Books. Okay. Uh, and copyrights being right. So do you copy. still? So, so this is mine. This one's yours. And the other one but is you on can't own. teach someone how to do this because oh, of that I could, book. Oh, I could. I could if if in a one-on-one -on -one or something. But they'd have Not, to. Oh, you'd have to get permission from the person who wrote that book oh. to use the pattern. So it, so the artists and you ladies are artists. Uh, it can protect your work. You it is it is copy written. So. Yes, the people that design it should be respected because they really put a lot into this and, right. and so that's why you're, you, you don't teach in a, specifically in a shop if you don't have access to the materials you need to learn oh, how to okay. do it. So anyway, right. this is a kaleidoscope quilt and I'm going to make more because I just love the process. <laughs> Fantastic. And now this one on the back, you've got a solid uh, one piece, mm -hmm. and was this a long arm quilting? This was long arm quilting so it's, well. got, it's got a pattern. Uh, that is repeated. It's not a random pattern. It's pretty. Mu it's a large pattern, but it is repeated. It's, it's a repeated one. It's not as. It's not individually okay. done. The other thing that I did on here, and I think you have done, is if you use a stripe in your border, it looks more interesting. And sometimes it looks like you pieced it, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. You just used the. The fabric basket. already had has right. that look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Well, you mentioned a kaleidoscope quilt. So there's different kinds of quilts, and sometimes we use the blocks, and other times it's, like I say, strips, you know, and all. Uh, Bargello is a needlework, um, a needlepoint type of uh, craft um, that people have done for centuries, I think. But quilters have adapted it to their needs, and mm -hmm. this quilt is a Bargello quilt. Well, that right is way. added to our vocabulary now, Bargello. It sounds it's made like from maybe strips. It looks like Venetian glass. It's so gorgeous. And um, you ask, how long did it take? Well, it took a long mm -hmm. time to cut all the strips. It took me even longer to decide on the colors. <laughs> um, but when I actually put it together, I was at a retreat and I put it together in a week. But I did. Oh my goodness! I did it only this. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, it's just a different way of putting fabrics together to get mm -hmm. a beautiful design, and this one is called Bargello. Oh, it's fantastic. Thank you. The colors are great, too. Thank you. Oh, I see we have a little label back here. Oh, Can yes. you explain the little label? Well, any quilter who does a quilt should really put a label on their quilt saying who made the quilt, when it was made, and where it was made. They find old quilts and we love to know when we see these old quilts 
who made it? When was it made? And Where did it come from? from. Antiques exactly. Roadshow all yeah. the time. They're exactly. always looking on the binding. And sometimes people don't put them on, and so then it's just anonymous. But it's much better if you just come up with a label and, and attach it to the back of your quilt. This one says, made by Mary Ann Zanter, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, in 2011. So it's basic and information. And you did that with the, uh, the embroidery stitching on your on machine, my machine, correct? On your yeah. machine. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you a different one that is a handwritten one. You, there are inks that will last on fabric. And I have the name of the quilt, which is Christmas in the Pines, my name, and where I lived at the time, and then I also made note of who did the quilting, because in all fairness, mm -hmm. half of the quilt yeah. sure. should, should be identified as quilted by someone else if you didn't do it yourself. And in quilt shows, you'll see that more and more. Not the right, person who pieced it may not be the only name up there. Right. Is there a different name for a person who pieces them versus quilting? I mean, we, we were, I was thinking you were quilters, but the person who does the quilting is actually a it's quilting. It's a quilting. quilting. Yeah, right. I suppose you could say peacemaker or piecer, but but we also often quilt yeah. our own smaller right. pieces, it's, but it's larger ones. It's only recently are... divided into two different. Right. And yeah. then there's People. the hand quilting versus machine domestic machine. They call it the small machines like we use, and then the long armors. So there are okay. all there's kinds a, of categories. Right. Right. So. More than you probably want to know. Well, no, I want to know, <laughs> but uh, more than I can retain at one time. So tell me about the Christmas okay. quilt. Well, this one is really more of a winter mm -hmm. look. I'm going to turn it this way. And I brought this one for a couple of reasons. One's because it's um, big. It is big. <laughs> I hang it, but you could throw it on. I like to make quilts that we call lap size rather than bed size because you can throw any quilt this size on mm -hmm. a bed and it looks, it changes the look of a room or on the back of a couch or whatever. I brought this because these are printed panels or sections mm -hmm. like a panel, the bird parts are. And then you buy the fabrics to set them off. And, and a, in this case, a, a designer of a pattern designed the pattern. And then you, know, you build the fabrics to go with what's in the centers. And, and interestingly, this came in two colorways. They had the more brown tone or the tan. And I was, we were traveling in the northern part of the state. And they, only, they did not have the center this in one. the light one anymore because of a different sample they did. So I bought the two, but I kind of liked having the contrast because mm -hmm. it added. It sets it off very very well in the center. Right. Makes it look like a different panel than that than that one in the corner. Mm -hmm. So you can buy panels for almost any occasion or for baby quilts. A lot of people mm -hmm. like to buy them because they're they're cute. They have the little things that would fascinate a child, and then they just put a border around it or mm -hmm. maybe cut it a little bit and put some other things. Would that be it. a good place to start, a baby quilt, because they're just smaller in size? Baby quilts, graduation quilts like lap size for kids can wrap up when they're studying uh, mm -hmm. in colors that or even seems something purple just like for a girl. Or like a table runner even they, is they, a way to start. That's right. You know. And always good for a friend that might be ill mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, or, a, or someone who's housebound. Right. which happens to all of us in the winter. <laughs> right. So what do okay. we have? This one um, was, again, a challenge for the guild. Sometimes we all do the same block like we did on that yellow one. Uh -huh. This one we were given, it had to have cherries, Andorra County cherries. Right. So this was what I chose to do with my cherries. So oh, it was just goodness. I found a cute little block that was that, you know, that gave the cherries and I gave mm -hmm. sweet cherries and, and what do you call cherries? <laughs> should talk Tart about cherries. Oh yes, so. this border is called Prairie Points and okay. it's folded fabric that you incorporate into the border and um, again this quilt is mostly hand quilted. It's hand quilted in the middle, it's machine quilted on the sides, on oh. the borders. But um, so. You made all those tiny little straight stitches like yeah. that? Mm -hmm. You're a wonder. <laughs> I enjoy it. It's very <laughs> relaxing. Okay. Well, I'd like to learn a little bit more about our local groups and, and activities that are coming up at, right now. So we're going to uh, adjourn back over to our table. I'd like to re go over some of the organizations that are in our community so that some of our viewers uh, could look them up based on the location or the time of day. So if we wanted to start with Mary Ann, would you like to tell me about the Peninsula Peacemakers? Yes, certainly. The Peninsula Peacemakers meet um, on Thursday evenings from 6 till 8 at the United Methodist Church on Michigan Avenue in Sturgeon Bay. Okay. Um, usually in the big meeting room 
there. Um, if we're not in that room, we, you can find us because you'll hear us. Uh, <laughs> and is everyone welcome? Uh, of course, everyone is welcome. The guild consists, our guild consists of about 20 some. We tend to have lower 20s, higher 20s, but we seem to stay in that range. Uh, actually, the Peninsula Peacemakers was formed when a lot of ladies wanted to go and join the Door County quilters, but they couldn't make it during the daytime so because they worked. So that's how we got started as an evening guild. Um, as I say, anybody is welcome. Some Do you need to know a lot about quilting? You don't need to know anything about quilting. We've had people who've come in kind of just to learn, and that's one of the reasons for a guild is to teach the craft mm -hmm. and um, so we try to provide classes this guild we bring our sewing machines frequently oh. and um, actually sew there you know oh, so at the at the church um, we in the winter time we have Saturday sews which um, would start at nine o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and go till about three o'clock and we bring potluck and we sew all day and we have oh. lunch and it's wonderful. Oh, fun. Uh, sometimes with those we have a class being taught but if you don't want to take the class you can work on whatever you want. Um, but that, that that's you know that's the nature shall we say of that guild. Now the Door County Quilters is a little different mm -hmm. and we both belong to that one. And while they don't have regular programs one time, Marianne came and demonstrated different kinds of bindings, bindings. on quilts, the binding being the outside edge, and you saw mm -hmm. that she had those prairie points, and there are other scalloped okay. edges and all kinds of things. She did a program. I did one on gadgets. For our oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the gadgets. <laughs> right. Um, but that group shares ideas, and they worked recently on Crazy Patch. We didn't talk about that, but that's... No. You Crazy Quilt ones. Dragon, like the Cinnamon Bear stories. <laughs> right, and, and they're... That's a combination of some embroidery stitches on top of where the seams are as small pieces are brought together. Randomly put together. Uh, and yeah. uh, that's not something I really wanted to do, but many of them did get into mm -hmm. that, and you can add lace and all kinds of things. But So often there's something like that where one person's interest leads to others wanting to try that as so well. So the Peninsula Peacemakers, if someone is interested, they could just go to this... Uh, to a meeting. To mm -hmm. a meeting, and that would be at the first or third Thursday, six to eight p.m. And we'll put the in contact information and the address of each of these community guilds, these quilting guilds, on our screen okay. sometime during our program, so that Good. the people don't have to try and write it down. Our viewers don't have to write it down as we speak. Okay. However, you also have a uh, trillium. The Trillium Guild is the one that meets in Sister Bay, and I was told that began with a group of ladies at SCAND who got together to quilt regularly. And then as that group changed membership, uh, some of them decided to formalize it a little bit, and they, have, they actually have a constitution and elected officers and a, and, um, and a treasury that allows them to bring in some speakers from outside of the area or within. Mm -hmm. uh, and that group is open to anyone who's interested, and it's a, uh, a different, Focus maybe I, I see a little more of the creative artistic side, but not always. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's all the the styles of quilting. And right now, at, at I'm going to do my advertising right now. But the Trillium oh, sure. Guild yeah. has a a show right now at the Uni Unitarian Universalist Church um, in Ephraim. In Ephraim, and it's called Beyond Comfort is the name of the show. And there I'm going to say 15 or between 15 and 20 for sure. 15 quilts that are pictorial quilts. They're they're a little bit um, more along methods that are a little more free form. Mm -hmm. And for our viewers, we'll put the, there's a little ad for that show, and we'll put that up on the screen. Uh, the hours are based on when the church is open, or when the secretary is there on the weekdays mm -hmm. and then on Sunday. So it's 1 to 3, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or 11 to 12.30 on a Sunday. And you just stop in and you can take a look at those. Okay, and the Trillium Guild meets at the Sister Bay Fire Station. Right, and, and they, they meet on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month at 10 a.m. to noon. Sometimes mm -hmm. they will have an all-day workshop or sit and sew, uh, but otherwise the hours are 10 until noon. Okay. Membership is $20 a year for that one. The 
for the guild um, in the library, the, the Door County Quilters, it's $2 a year. And okay. for the Peninsula Peacemakers, it's $12 a year. Okay, well you can pick your, your poison as it, <laughs> as it were for that. And also resources at the Barn Door Quilt Shop, that's on 3rd right. Avenue in Sturgeon mm -hmm. Bay, or Door County Vacuums with Gwen Tremble. Uh, she would help you with your sewing machine if you have some questions and you've purchased that machine from her. And also helps some of the ladies in the guilds whenever they have interests. Uh, before we leave, I'd like you to tell me about this quilt. The quilt on the table is based on a log cabin quilt where you start with a square and then you sew another square and then you sew a rectangle and you work your way around and then you, by adding some triangles here and there you get this little pinwheel effect. Mm -hmm. This was on the cover of a magazine called Quilt Maker, Quilt Maker magazine and I liked it because it was simple. It, it, you could use any colors you wanted. It made me think of the waters in Door County in the mm -hmm. summer and, and the sunshine and whatever. Um, there are resources in, in quilt magazines from simple to challenging for mm -hmm. almost any style of quilting you want to do. There are an amazing number of books and patterns and online there are free as well as paid for classes that you mm -hmm. can take. So there's opportunity after opportunity if someone wants to, to do some quilting. And if you just if you want to start with a simple things like we said a table runner or a graduation quilt or a baby quilt that's the guild is there to help you any mm -hmm. of the guilds are there to help right. you get and going quilters are very uh, amenable people they are more than help more than happy to help generous their, with fabrics with, with threads time. with time with suggestions yes. and particularly with time and we really appreciate that you have spent so much time with us today Judy Ward and Marianne Zanter thank you very much for telling us about quilting in Door County. Well, You're thanks. very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for giving us the opportunity. Okay. You have been watching Access Door County with your host, Victoria Sarenich. Access Door County is carried exclusively on the Sevastopol Cable TV channel 986. Thank you for watching. <laughs>